For more than two centuries, the Theatre Royal at Drury Lane has been one of London's most prestigious theatrical venues. Actor and manager David Garrick helped spur the Shakespeare revival of the 18th century here. He rescued Shakespeare from neglect, staging an average of 10 of the Bard's works each season. Garrick's successor, Richard Brinsley Sheridan, quickly fell into debt. Sheridan was a free-spending gambler and alcoholic. He hoped to recoup his losses by staging the sensational new Shakespeare play that everyone was talking about, Vortigern and Rowena. He knew the play's owners, Samuel Ireland and his son, William Henry, as neighbors and friends of his ravishing wife, Eliza, here in a portrait by Gainsborough. Sheridan cast the greatest actors and actresses of the age in the lead roles. Playing King Vortigern would be Drury Lane's imperious leading man, John Philip Kemble. Kemble is shown here as Hamlet, the role that made him a star. Kemble, however, had doubts about the new play's origins. He shared his misgivings with his celebrated sister, the lovely Sarah Siddons, cast opposite him as Queen Edmunda. The actress playing the king's daughter was Dorothea Jordan. Curly-haired and vivacious, Mrs. Jordan was the darling of the gallery gods. She was also the mistress of the future King William IV. Mrs. Jordan was certain the play was Shakespeare's. Critical opinion on the play was divided. Was it Shakespeare's or was it a forgery? Audiences at Drury Lane had no need for critics. They liked to make up their own minds. As Sheridan told Kemble during rehearsals, an Englishman considers himself as good a judge of Shakespeare as of his pint of porter. Spectators at Drury Lane were, as a rule, uninhibited, as shown in the 1785 watercolor by Thomas Rowlandson. People talked during performances. They ate, they flirted, they brought their dogs. Theatergoers sometimes argued with the actors on stage, occasionally challenged other spectators to duels, and frequently rioted when displeased. The theater had to install iron spikes along the proscenium to keep excited spectators from climbing on stage. The first premiere of a Shakespearean play in 200 years was sure to draw a standing-room-only crowd, and it was unlikely to be a quiet one. <laughs>